one and all to the KOE Nation for another premium spirits review. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, Phil KOE, joined by my indomitable broadcast partner, Tony fucking G. Like, share, subscribe. We are here to get into the Speyside Scotch line of Glen Moray. It's one that we have done a review of just the Cabernet yes. cask finish. We were thoroughly impressed. Yeah. But in our travels, we stumbled upon a little bit of a uh, sampling. So I thought a tasting collection, why not? That, yeah. That's pretty much right up our alley. And this one has, let's just uh, give a small preview here. We have the standard Glen Murray line. I'm actually probably well, most excited. Get these start breathing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm probably most excited to just try the standard Glen Murray Speyside Scotch. I don't know why. I'd like to see what their base scotch is like compared to this one. I'm leaving, have had a, I'm leaving a touch in each bottle for Fair a enough. reason to be explained later. Glen Murray. Sherry cask finish, Speyside, another Elgin classic. Hmm. That's the Cabernet. This is the Cabernet. This is the Sherry. So the Sherry is going into these Joy Jolt glasses. Slightly different from the Glen Karen glasses. I've really enjoyed the Cabernet, but I am really excited to see the Sherry because that one's got a bit of a different feel overall. Yeah, Sherry in Scotch always does have its, it's interesting It can influence. go either... Badly or nicely. This one, the pork cask finish. That one. This is either going to be really good or not favorite. For That's, me, I don't think there's any way I'm going to not enjoy this one. I like pork finish a lot. Yeah, you like pork finish like I like sherry finish. Yeah. I think that one's going to be really damn good. Alrighty. And then... Of course... The Cabernet cask finish, which we have a large bottle of that right here, but uh, you know, I think we will uh, we'll get into this bottle here just for evenness sake. Fair enough. I think all of these are going to be marvelous. I already know the Cabernet is... It's a big hit. It strikes above its weight class. I'll yeah, put it that way. That's, that's fair. So... We have the Glen Murray line. The Glen Murray distillery has been producing single malt scotch since the 19th century from Elgin, the capital of Speyside, Scotland's most famous whiskey region. That is a claim that all other whiskey regions of Scotland will be like, hey! The craft of producing this elegant and well-known and well-rounded single malt has been passed from generation to generation, ensuring, ensuring the legacy of the Glen Murray Distillery continues. Product of Scotland. Hmm. So, looking forward to trying this, folks. We've got the basic line out in front of us. We've got the baseline. We've got the sherry. We've got the port. We've got the cabernet. So now we know what each glass is. Let's Get into their baseline offering, no age statement, Glen Murray. Hmm. Very honey based. Very space side. That was my oh, first yeah. thought. Like, <clears throat> welcome to space side. Yeah, that speaks to me on a lot of levels. I love that smell. Hmm. No age statement needed here. It just smells. It's young. It smells. It is, but you you can smell that space side, and it's marvelous. I was chuckling to myself. It's like, yeah, if you were to drop me like 120 years in the past, and Richard Patterson wasn't the head of the Dalmore Distillery, I might be more inclined towards the space sides. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. You know, that's we don't know what historical scotches taste like from then. But that's just my. Uh, I really like this. There's a. There's a very floral pattern, but it's not overly floral. There's a lot of that honey that you get from the space side, but there's also another note that I can't put my finger on. Buttery. Not buttery. Maybe a, a nut? Maybe. 
Well, let's see how it hits the, the old pallet, sir. Hmm. That's good. It's very yeah, there's nothing. Basic. Uh, yeah. A little bit of honey. Oh, yeah. A little bit of that mm. floral sweet, but not much. No nope. bite. Like a little bit of a tingle in the middle of the tongue. Just a little. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but a good good nose. I, I can't complain with the nose. No, that's about the best uh, basic introduction you could get into a space side scotch. Like that is the. I hate this. This is not an insult by any means. That's a default space side introduction right there. Yeah, this would be like, all right, what's a space side? Mm. Here you go, Glen Murray. Yeah, I'll give you a good idea. Yeah, this is very. If nice. you ain't got Glen Fit it on hand or some of the other mm -hmm. space sides, Glen Murray, and probably mm. get it for a quite a bit cheaper as well. Yeah, that's so, really nice. Um, I have no complaints about this. It's not overly complex. There's not a lot to dig in there. You get all the classic space side stuff. You get the scotch feel. It's not overbearing in any way. It's not offensive in any way. That is as basic as it gets. I would it's very nice, though. On our scoring system, I would score this higher as a whiskey than I would as a scotch, to be honest with you. Okay, are we... You know what? Them? Let's let's rank them. You're here. Let's do it, folks. Okay. We rank these on a couple different scales. As a single malt scotch, yep. as a scotch, as a whiskey, and then it's shelving. Okay. So we are on the Glen Murray. Oh, that's the opposite end. Other end. There you go. There we go. No, no. We'll get there. There we go. I put this one out. Uh, yep. I put the cat, the sherry cask where I shouldn't have. Okay. So, all right. We are here with the single malt space side whiskey, the Glen Murray base offering. Now, as a single malt scotch, how would you rate this? Five star scale. I would give this a three. Three? Yep. I'm going to be a little more generous as a single malt and give this 375 because uh, it is such a good proof of type. Like, only because it's such a good space side representation. It is. You kind of have, as a single malt, you have to give it some It does leave you points. yearning for a bit more complexity. So I got a I, feeling we'll get there in a minute. I can't go much higher than three. It, it is what it is. It's very nice. It's very approachable. It's a great introduction. You know, I think you convinced me. I'm going to go three and a half. You, yeah. you convinced me. Uh, as a scotch. As a scotch, I'll give this a... I'll give this a three and a half on a scotch scale because almost anybody could drink this and be pretty happy with it. Mm -hmm. Like if you're if you're gonna give somebody a bottle of scotch as an introduction or as a drinking scotch or and maybe not a special occasion scotch, but nobody's gonna be offended by drinking this. This is very nice through and through. Three yeah. and a half. All right, uh, I'm gonna agree with you. Three and a half. Uh, just everything you said perfectly applies. It's a good drink of yeah. scotch. Nobody's going to feel underserved. No. And it's not like some insanely expensive bottle no. that you feel bad Absolutely about, not. you know, having a few drops go down a little yeah. easy. Uh, as a whiskey. As a whiskey, uh, you could probably use this as a cooking utensil and you wouldn't feel bad about it, but... There's not a lot of complexities, as we've mentioned. It's very basic, so I will, I'll go three again. Mm. Yeah. As a whiskey, I'm gonna go three, seven, five, because this would be a good cooking whiskey. You could also, you could mix this, this would be great. Yes, you could mix it. It'd also be great on the rocks. I think this, yeah, would, this would be marvelous on the rocks. I think this would dilute it a little too much on the rocks. Uh, if you let it sit there in the glass too long, you'd be basically drinking water, unfortunately. This is probably a little bit... The way uh, some folks like it. Uh, and it is, but yeah, it, it'd be fine. It'd be good. So, it'd be drinkable, but I, I'll, I'm going to stay where I am. We disagree on whiskey because yeah. I think it's a fine whiskey. It is, it is. It's actually, a, in my opinion, it's a better whiskey than it is a scotch. And it's a good scotch. It's a little more diverse. You could do a little bit more with it. I agree. So, all right. Shelving. I would say metal. This one would be a middle to bottom, depending on which one's got more room. Like, I'm just going to be honest I with you. I don't see myself putting this on the bottom. No, unless I'm running out of room. So, yeah, this would be a definitively middle, but if I got to move it down. <sighs> I'd put this next to a standard Chivas Regal if I'm going to sit this on my bottom shelf. I'd, this would be right next to the bottle of Chivas. Mm, you know, 
Very comparable. Chivas might be sitting next to it in the same place for me as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we move onward and upward to what I'm really looking forward to, Sherry Cask. All right. So we're familiar with the Cabernet. How do you feel like this is going to differentiate? More cherries, less grape. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm. Definitely that thickness of a, of a cherry. Give me You're right. A little chocolatey. Yeah, I was going to say like a chocolate cherry. Exactly like that. Very dessert smelling. Mm. This is, would be a great dessert. Oh, yeah. Drink. This is very good dessert after dinner drink. Very sweet. Very chocolatey. It does not. It does not immediately hit you like a scotch. Yeah, it's, and it doesn't offend the nose at all. No, it's, this is very approachable to the nose. You get right past the ethanol immediately and just, well. Yeah, this is very, very sweet, very nice on the nose. See how this one hits. Mm. Mm. A little more tangy. A lot more tangy. But, oh, yeah, finish That's very lovely. nice. That is lovely. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that oh. chocolateiness stays a lot longer than the cherry. The note, the the chocolatey cherry nose doesn't quite show up immediately on the palate, but does on the back end. When you do this, cherry, swallow, breathe. There's that chocolate cherry. Oh, wow. Marvelous, marvelous. Yeah, that's stuff. really really nice. As a that's single really malt. Nice. Ooh, as a single malt, I think that I think that achieves a little bit more than some of the contenders in the same category for the same flavor wish they could be. I'm actually pretty impressed with that as a single malt. I'm going to give that 3.75. 3.75 as a single malt? Yeah. I agree with you. It's an amazingly yeah, good I'd single really malt. Um, it might be a little bit more niche, but uh, the sherry malts usually it's are. Nice. It's nice, but really nice. They're not as much of a niche as you think. A lot of people are I'm like sure me; they like the like sherry malts. No, that's fair. And why wouldn't you? Especially if this if this is more of a basic uh, branding, especially for Scotch, something like this. This is very nice. Uh, if somebody really likes wine, and you want to introduce them some whiskey. Some scotch specifically, this might be the perfect introduction because it hits in all the right places. I was about to say that, or there is one place from the Highlands that I can mm -hmm. think of that might also be good for that particular task. But mm. so, as Very much a dessert. scotch, oh, as a scotch, I'm not going to be nearly as kind, and I will say three. Bowie and Peshaw. I, Why do you say that? I say three because, again, that chocolatey cherryness is very appealing. But for those reaching out for a scotch, this is not necessarily the standard bottle you would want to grab for. If you're out to try to have a good time with friends or if you're out to play some cards with some buddies, this wouldn't necessarily be the bottle you'd want to grab first. This is... Uh, Again, I, I think it's a lot more streamlined after dinner dessert line. Yeah, I, I'll give you that, but I'm going to disagree with your rating. Okay. I'm going to stick with 375. Right. From single malt to scotch, it's just a damn fine scotch. It is. It's very nice. Now, as a whiskey. As a whiskey. Gets a little deeper. You could definitely cook with that. I think mm. this would be an amazing addition into some desserts. Gosh, this would be great in some like uh, if you if you're familiar with like your grandma making like rum balls, that type of recipe, that would be marvelous in it. Uh, even like a, a, a poultry based meat, that would be amazing. Mm. And it's not going to be like crazily priced that you wouldn't feel offended using it for that. I think you could do some stuff with this. I would not cocktail with this necessarily, although you could do it. I will give this a three point seven five on a whiskey scale. Mm. And I'm going to actually go the exact opposite end of really? it. Really? This is a I'm much surprised. better scotch than it is a whiskey. I'm surprised. I would not cocktail this. I wouldn't either, but you could I would be very tepid hmm. about cooking with it. Hmm. I don't know if you'd put it on the rocks. I'm surprised. I th See, I think that I'm, I'm the opposite. I think this would actually go good on the rocks. Maybe. Maybe. I'm just a little tepid on it. 
This I, might be one we've got to come back to sometime. I think you might be right because I'm yeah. going to say as a whiskey, three, two, five. I, uh, I don't know. I think we're, we're, I think little, we're saying the same thing, but we're meeting in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah. So it is maybe. Maybe yeah. we might have to come back to this. I'm surprised. Sherry Cast Glen Murray. Excellent stuff, really regardless. Surprised. But shelving. Oh, shelving. Ah. This is middle shelf. Yep. Definitively middle as well. Yeah, middle shelf. Yep, yep. Can't. Uh, it's a no, good space side. I, I, I'll be honest. I'm not sure if any Glen Murray introduction is going to be able to make it quite up to my top shelf, but we've got two to go. And one of them's the Portwood. Yes. So that one might. We'll That'll see. That'll be close. That'll be close. So what do we have next? Are we doing the Cabernet? The next one is the port cast oh. finish right here. <clears throat> so. Let's see how this one hits the nose. I am notoriously fond of the port. So oh, that's oh, it's subtle. I was about to say it's not nearly as loud no, as the sherry malt. Very light on the nose. It's crisp though. I was about to say it's it seems like this the A. Yes, yes. You come but in, with a light grape. If you come, oh yes, definitely grape. You come in, you get one quick sniff. And it's just enough to tell you what you're about to get. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. I really Two like entirely it. different notes. Honestly, from the so far, the no, hands down, this is my favorite nose so far. It's very subtle. I love the subtleness, but uh, Let's see at the it. same time, it's a. if you get deep, there is a complexity there. Uh, the wine's coming through, folks. Love it. Let's see how it hits. Mm. There's a lot more fruitiness to that one. Oh yeah, uh, no chocolate. It's a no, lot of um. That's a berry mix, a berry blend, with a little bit of mint on the back. I was gonna say it does open up your airwaves just a little bit with a refreshment, and it's not like a minty flavor, but it's a mint refreshness. That's really nice. Yeah, no, definitely so far that I'm, I'm probably the most impressed with that. Go figure. What a shock. Tony, yeah. Tony loves his pork cask. I anything, do really. love a pork cask, and that does not disappoint. The nose is so subtle, but intriguing, and the mouth, oh. Yeah. It's... And I love chocolate, and I loved that, but my goodness. That is, this, a, that is a berry sweetness that you just cannot ignore. This one does just go down a little easier. It does. Like, I could down that and not even feel bad about it. And I'd be like, well, more. Just more. Keep it keep it coming. So. that That's honestly one I would probably buy a bottle of to take for a night out that I would say, oh, this is what I'm drinking tonight. Yeah. Please. Be impressed. Honestly, I would because I, I think that one has enough complexity to it. Yeah, this one is uh, quite yeah. the drink. I, I really like As that. a single malt scotch, how would you rate this? As sir? a single malt scotch, I think it's almost not fair that it's a port because I really like it. I'm going to, uh, this is probably not a fair rating, but four. Four? Yeah. I, I figured that's where you were going I'm with going it. four. As a single I really, malt think that they hit the nail on the head with this one and that's a great finish it's a great smell it's a great taste it's a great finish that's amazing I i'm gonna it. give it 375 as a single malt okay that's probably fair Damn that's probably fine. where i should have rated it but but it is more cast finish so what are you gonna do yep it's thick and bold enough. I'm sticking with four. I really think that's nice. Now, are you going to remain as generous when we move on to scotch? As a scotch, I will give that a 3.25. 3.25 as a scotch? Yes, because what? I don't feel that's going to appeal to exactly everybody who likes scotch. Especially if you like the Highland. There's no... There's definitely no peat with this. 
this is the polar opposite of something you would expect on that end of the spectrum. Yeah, anything from the aisles, yeah. this is kind of the opposite. This, this is space side. This is sweet. This is very appealing if you don't like a peated scotch. So this is a bit more pointed towards a specific crowd. I think it nails it, but yeah, you got to be a little bit more reserved on the rating scale. Uh, as a scotch, I'm going to give this three and a half. So I'm actually a little higher okay, than you no, on that's that one. Perfectly fair. Now, as a whiskey, ooh, the whiskey. Lake I'm gonna, I'm gonna double back to what I said about the last. I think you could cook with this. You could definitely not cocktail this. Yeah, I wouldn't. No, no, definitely not. It would take a lot of extra ingredients, and the more ingredients you add, you're kind of defeating the purpose of the base yeah. alcohol. So, no, I would This is one to be enjoyed this. neat. I would say maybe a droplet of water, maybe one cube with a little bit. I would not let the water dilute it too much. I think this is about the right ABV. I think it's about perfect neat. A giant ice ball or something like yeah. that would work. You wouldn't want to go too much more than that. I think this is about right. Um, As a whiskey? Yeah, they're all 40%, so not even the port's up. So as a whiskey, how would you give it? As a whiskey. That's tough, man. I had a number in my head, and now I'm... I'm going to stick with three and a half while you're thinking about it. So I'm. Gonna That's where I was at. Yep. So you gave yeah. it four stars and a single malt, three and a half, I three and a quarter, and three and a half. I think it's good enough to justify a three and a half, but I could definitely not go higher because of its uniqueness. I don't want to say simplistic, but yes, uniqueness. So, shelving. Per oh, personally, I would put this in my top. I would. I kind of figured. I love it. It I would, love it would be on my middle shelf, but I know this guy would put it on his top. I, so. would, I would definitely put this in my I love it. We I move love on that. to the last one. Okay. The Cabernet Sauvignon cask finish. And here's a large bottle of it. Now, I don't want to delve back and look at what we reviewed it originally, because I will be honest. The first time we reviewed this, I think we'd had several other liquors that night. And to be completely fair and honest with the viewing public, I, I have had one dram of this already tonight. And I do like this. Yep. And this is European red wine, not California. <laughs> Makes a big difference. Yeah, California is really sweet. I think the nose on this alone, none, oh, it's very subtle. Reminds me of the port a little more, but there's... The, the no, excuse me, the nose is red. not subtle, but it's subtle as in terms of a scotch. I, can get, I think this resembles more of a, a, a red wine when you get a good oh, yeah. whiff of it. Oh, yeah. You don't think scotch. when you If you put this up to somebody's nose, they're not going to be thinking a single malt scotch. They're going to be thinking a wine. A red wine. It just it speaks to that. It's you know, much, I, much I hate that. Oh yeah, yeah. Much thicker on the nose. <sighs> but it is a really nice nose. Mm. Mm. Does have and that that's a great taste. Red wine dryness that hits your mouth. <sighs> There's I, just so much red wineness no, to this. What I love about this one specifically that I hate about a lot of dry red wines is it dries your palate out. It takes that, but it adds that scotch, Isle honey, and it combines the two very, very nicely, and it leaves you with a damp enough palate to appreciate that dry redness, which I really like. I think that's why I like this one so much. It, it takes the best of both worlds, and it combines them in a very approachable way. Hmm. Yeah, these are uh, all great offerings. Like it, it's impressive the fact that this is a very affordable line of scotch, and they have such different introductions to it. I'm yeah. I'm honest. I'm, I'm glad I also have a sampler pack because that was a that was a great find for both of us. This is mm -hmm. this is a very nice line. Oh yeah, so great line as a single malt scotch, the Cabernet Ooh. Cast finish. I don't. I'm, I'm trying not to remember exactly what I rated it last time because that's not fair. Because doing the entire line, it does. 
make a bit of a difference. A little bit of this before tonight. Mm. But that honey with that dry redness, sweet wine. It's a single malt. Yep. As a single malt. Four. I'm going to agree with him. I, Four yeah, stars I really as a single like malt. that as a single malt. I think that's unique enough, but not offensive enough to the palate or the nose or the finish that that one would stand alone besides these three that you could say, okay, this is a different type of scotch. Try this one now. Oh, yeah. If you were to blind taste yeah. test this in a line, you wouldn't have people saying this is the same distillery. Um, no, no. And that's what's so impressive about it. So no, as a scotch. Uh, between those two a little bit, but. Oh, yeah. Then definitely. Yeah. See what I mean? Like, it's yeah. such a wide variety. You can go variety back and forth between noses. the port and the, the sherry a little bit. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it's definitely different. Okay, next grading scale, you said? Scotch. Oh, it was a scotch. Mm. We went four stars as a single malt, folks. Not on ice. I would not cut that with water. You could put that on chicken and cook with it. Hmm. Uh, three and a half. Three and a half as yep. a Scotch. It doesn't burn. It doesn't burn. Like, there's no real burn there. There's no spiciness. It just finishes. It finishes like a very dry wine. Yeah, it does. There's no bite. And your mouth isn't dry. And no, and your mouth, no, it's not. You're still very moist on the palate. I, I enjoy it a lot. I think that's fair. Okay. Um, now, as a Scotch. I know, as a whiskey. So whiskey, I will be a little more brutal. Three. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if I'd cocktail this. No, I wouldn't. I would I'm going to give it um, three, two, five. Yeah. Let's just be honest. Yeah, uh, I, I like it a little more than you do. Yep. So, shelving. <sighs> Middle. That's where I pulled it off of my shelving. There you go. Now, Tony, we have gone through okay. the line. What is your favorite nose, first of all? Oh, my favorite nose. I really like the approachable honey based Islay Scotch. That space is, side. Or, yes, it's Space Side. It just, it's so familiar. I love this nose, but it's not, there's not a lot of complexities here. But it's familiar and it appeals to me mm. so much. The Sherry Cask. I like it. I do, but there's that mustiness a little bit. If you, and now that I say that, you're not going to not smell it. Well, there was a thickness to the a smell. Thickness. I, I say musty and not in a bad way. Now that it's opened up a little, I do understand but it what is, you're saying. It, it's there. The port. Oh, God. Yeah, I just heavenly. Love, oh, I love that port. Yeah, smell. that is an amazing nose. It's so good. Oh, the Cabernet. It's very nice. Honestly, the longer it sits there in the open air, it gets a little sharper. Mm -hmm. When you're okay, <clears throat> this might sound stupid, but when you're reading music, a flat, sharp. Mm -hmm. This is how I would compare it. My grandmother was a piano teacher. Okay. So, okay. Piano, harpsichord. Does that make sense? Okay. That's a piano. The note stays and resonates. And then with the, the Cabernet cast, harpsichord. The full note arrives complete and full oh. upon the keystroke. Okay. Uh, no, no, that's a... Accordion. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll say, no, 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 let's not pull in a American rye in the middle of this. Now, Tony. Okay, so... I have to give you credit here. All right. You have waited this long. Yeah. You can start blending. Okay. <clears throat> Turn them around. I'm trying to figure out what the best blend will be. And I'm honestly thinking I'm going to do two and two and then together. How do you feel we should go about this? Because are, are we talking? This is the same lineup. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I think, honestly, the, the Glen Murray Cabernet. Oh, no. Backwards. Well, yeah, the bottles are backwards. Oh, Sorry. yes. Let's. Thank you. Big, big difference. Big difference. The standard Glen Murray with. No. No, not the sherry. This one's. Actually, I'm going to say the sherry and the port. Yeah, I think they would go well. I think, yep, the two metal and the standard and the Cabernet. Am I wrong? I don't know. If you want to blend the first two, go for it, sir. I'm going to go with the two in the middle. And then I'm going to go on the two on the outside. Do you want to go the opposite direction? Why not? Okay. Two in the middle. Together. And I'm going to go two on the outside. Together. So I've got those two and those two. So I have got here the single malt scotch and the cabernet. Oh, actually, they kind of both complement each other very nicely. Mm. And what I have is the original oh, and no. the sherry. Oh, my goodness. Don't like it as a... No, no, that's very nice. This is the original and the, the uh, sherry. Oh. No, that works. I think the original is going to be a, a good base for any of them, honestly. Mm. Mm. These mm. taste like brownies. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like a baker's chocolate. Yep. Yeah. No, that's very nice. Yep. Yeah, you got to yeah, try yeah. some of that. Okay. Flip the glass for social distancing. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. That's really nice, too. Yep, yeah. No, there's nothing bad about that. Wow. Okay, this one. These, no, these, these all go, I think, very well. This together. is Cabernet and Port. And you have, what do you got there? I have the cherry and, and the sherry. port. Yes. Sherry and port. I'm very this excited. Is Cabernet about this and one. port. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, my God. Nope. Ooh. Oh, yeah, Lord. wow. That's interesting. That's Sherry and Port together are not too bad. That one's just interesting. It's just very smooth. Nothing stands out too hard. They all kind of oh, round each minute. other's edges. Oh, wait yep. a minute. The Port that, and the Cabernet. This mixture right here. That, if they could bottle that, that would be a standalone, solid $40 bottle introduction to scotch. That port and cabernet. This, this right here, that is that is an introductory bottle right there. Now, Tony, I know you want to do it. Pour them together. Oh, hell yes, I do. Yep. Yep. So and now we got the same thing at this point. Yes. Well, mostly. Yeah, it may be some slightly different. We're close. We're close. So now we are talking. Oh god. All four of them blended together in one I lovely dram. Absolutely love this part. Oh my god, the nose on that. Wow. This is like being in a vineyard. This is like walking down aisle after aisle of grapes and fruits and. Just an orchard of sweetness on the nose. And now, Phil's already a Oh, yeah, I've had some. It's marvelous. Oh. Yeah, it's good stuff. And it has nothing to do with the fact that we're four whiskeys in deep. Uh, no, I think you should actually go ahead and take what's remaining in these bottles and just put it into one and I save can, that. I kind of figured you're yeah, going to come to that conclusion. Yeah, just save this mixture right here because that's delightful. Um, honestly, what stands out the most to me is the port on the nose. 
again, the, the standard base is such a nice backbone to this drink. It's there, but the port stands out, but I get that cherry chocolateness on the front, and then I get that cherry cask on the finish, but the port stands out on the nose, but it also hits the tongue. Like, you get the best of all of them. That's really nice. Yeah. Honestly, for a, for an affordable line of uh, scotch for a brand, you're not going to get, if you like blending, like I do, clearly, uh, yeah, this is about your best go of it. Our blender's master here at the KOE Nation. This man. is really good. Richard Patterson ain't got nothing on him. No, this is really, really good. Yeah, yeah. This is actually a pretty damn good blend. This isn't just a blended bottle of swill. Folks, no. if you were going to have, if you just had a third a bottle mm. of Glen Murray, two mm. third of bottles of really any type uh, for their base offering, and you were to blend them. Pick up the sampler. You'd have a just, good, yeah. No, pick up, I take that back. Pick up two samplers, try them each individually, and then try them together because that's really nice. Yeah, I I cannot complain. So God, scotch is so fun, Tony. <laughs> as we go deeper into our war of the space side versus the Highlands, Tony, as I'm known to say around here, take it away. All that being said, this has been our review of the Glen Moray line of single malt scotch whiskeys from their base offering to all of their lovely finished malts. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme Phil KOE, signing off and handing it off to my indomitable broadcast partner, the one, the only, Tony fucking G. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for joining us and be safe out there, folks. Mm. That was pretty damn good. Mm. Yeah, damn, that's not bad. That is not bad at all. Alright, now we're reviewing more whiskey. Alright.